we got a couple Finn McKenty videos to watch, okay? Uh, the first one here we got is how TikTok ruined music. This is something I'm very interested in, and uh, uh, I'm interested to see what uh, Finn has to say. So here we go. What's up, everybody? I'm Finn McKenty. Awesome, this is That's the Punk cool. Rock NBA, and today we're going to talk about how TikTok has changed music, both for better and, in some ways, for the worse. Okay. And we need to talk about this because whether you like it or not, the fact of the matter is that when it comes to music marketing, there is nothing more powerful than TikTok. Here's my initial impression before we get too deep into the video. That Here's my initial impression of TikTok and music. I think that with TikTok, there's a lot more virality with music. You know, random songs could become viral. Like, for example, that Kate Bush song in um, Stranger Things. Like, that can come back and be popular. Or a new song can become popular. But I do feel like there are some... There, there's an element of the, you know, like, really appreciating a full song. Like, a four or five-minute song or anything like that. I feel like a lot of it's kind of bite-sized now. Um but there is definitely a virality element to it. It has over 1 billion users, yeah. and 75% of those users say that they discover new artists through the platform. That yeah. means over 750 million people all over the planet who are hungry for new music. And all an artist really needs to do to get that big breakthrough that everybody is looking for is make the right 15 second video on their phone. And like literally overnight, they could be the next big thing, which is amazing, right? Well, yes, but also no, because as much as TikTok is an incredible opportunity for artists, it also puts a lot of pressure on artists in ways that probably aren't great. The biggest one being that it's kind of reducing songs down to five or six second sound bites and yeah. putting a lot of artists in a position where they feel like if they don't invest a lot of their time and energy in making TikToks, that their career is doomed. Or at least that's what some people are saying, most notably Halsey and Mike Shinoda from Linkin Park, among others. But yeah, so if real quick, uh, Clav and uh, Beef Borger, thank you for the follow. Uh, yeah, I think... I don't know. The, the thing is with me is that it's like, I feel like when you're an artist, I just, especially in metal, right? Like long are the days where you can just create a song and people are going to, are going to love it, you know? And like, and like, I just don't feel like that. I mean, like that happens. Right. But like, I just don't feel like it's the same. Like, I, I don't know. Like it, like you, like you need to be out there using these social media platforms to promote you and whatnot, and sometimes some of that is like, it's a lot of extra stuff, uh, for sure. Is that really true, or yeah, is there more to yep. it than that? Did TikTok really ruin music, or is this just another case of entitled artists complaining? Those are the questions mm. that I will answer in this video. And also, thanks to Raid Shadow Legends yes. for sponsoring this video. Thank I've you, been Raid. working with these guys for something like three years now. And since then, Thank you, like, Raid. so much has changed for me and my yeah. channel. Like, wow, my edits were so bad back then. And I Thank gotta you, say, Raid. I really appreciate their support. What I personally like about the game is how detailed you can get with equipping your champions. Yeah. And there is a ton happening in Raid this month. Hell including yeah. Including an entirely new event for the summer solstice which is called the Path of Light. And also there's some very cool new champions and a set of skins nice. for the amazing Trunda Guilt Mallet. Also, Raid Hell is yeah. currently running a special Deliana Chase event where you can get your hands on the amazing Deliana. All Damn. you have to do is log in and play Raid for seven days between now and That's July it? 20th, and you will get Deliana for free. Wow. That's it. And if you click my link in the description you would be or scan my QR code not take here on the screen, you will get unique bonuses worth $30. Guys, free $30. I mean, come on. A free epic champion called Tayrell, 200,000 yep. silver, one energy refill, one XP boost, and one ancient shard. Easy. And all this treasure will be waiting for you right here. And all new players, you guys have listen phones. up. Once you're in game, just enter promo code MyDeliana to get your hands on everything. Yes. Simple. Get 50 XP brews to Look instantly get your legendary hero Deliana to max level 50, as on well it. as a ton of silver. Now, yep. before I get into all that, first, let me set the stage about why we're even talking about TikTok at all and just kind of explain exactly how much of an impact TikTok <laughs> has had on music. <laughs> totally. So on the one hand, the idea of artists being discovered on social media is nothing new. 
for example, Justin Bieber, who obviously is one of the biggest stars of the past generation of music, yeah. was discovered on YouTube back in 2007 when his mom uploaded some videos of him in a singing contest. Dude, 2007 doesn't even feel long ago, man. Look at Justin Bieber. He, he looks like he, he literally is a child. Like That's 15 years ago. Damn, I'm getting old, man. Scooter Braun saw that, became his manager, and the rest is history. Soldier Boy is another example who is even earlier than that, as he loves to tell you he was the first rapper on YouTube. And he's not wrong. He the uploaded first. his first video in 2006 and then blew up in 2007 with his big breakthrough song, Crank That. Hey, what's up, man? This is Soldier Boy, you know what I'm saying? And of course, Hell on yeah. the emo alternative metal side of things, MySpace created a whole generation of bands in the late 2000s, Huge. like Asking Alexandria of Mice and Men, Hollywood Undead, and Bring Me the Horizon. Want to hear more many, about Raid? Many, many yeah, others, me all too. All of which are still going strong today. Sold millions of records, hit the Billboard Top 10, and all of that was thanks to MySpace. But compared to all of that, TikTok really is on another level. Back in 2020, TikTok themselves themselves reported that the platform had created 90 songs that hit the Billboard Top 100, five number one hits, and 70 artists who ended up getting signed to major labels. And the artists we're talking Holy about here are shit. not just one hit wonders, although there are plenty of those, which yeah. I'll talk about later. True. These are like legit artists who are doing big things outside of TikTok. For example, Olivia Rodrigo's song Driver's License, which blew up on TikTok last year and ended up becoming the biggest debut song ever in the streaming era. And in her case, you could maybe argue that it's not 100% organic because she did come from like the Disney ecosystem. She was on High School, the musical, the TV show or whatever it was. But it's I did not know that. But man, I got to say, dude, it is crazy the power that TikTok has. Like... All these other social medias are like obviously very like a huge part of promoting you and your music and all that. But like TikTok, man, is on another level in, in Trent. Thank you for the follow. As far as I'm aware, in the case of another big star who came up on TikTok, Lil Nas X, it was entirely organic. He had been grinding Damn. for years. He originally kind of got his start in the social media world running a Nicki Minaj stan account on Twitter, but he really blew up after Old Town Road was used in- What? <laughs> so Lil Nas X first got social media notoriety for a stan account. What? And a popular challenge. And he's become one of this generation's most interesting artists with five Billboard top 10 songs since 2018, kind of proving that he was more than just a TikTok one hit wonder. And there are tons and tons more stories like that on a smaller scale, of course. But still, like I said, TikTok is churning out a lot of artists who are going on to have like legitimate careers any way you want to look at it. And so, of course, everyone in the industry is seeing that and trying to be that next person to ride the TikTok wave, which, of course, is totally understandable. Like, you'd be kind of stupid not to do that. But the second and third order effects of that sort of race mm. to be the next big thing on TikTok are not always good. The yeah. first and most obvious example of that is the effect that TikTok has on how artists write music. Meaning that in a world where TikTok hype is pretty much everything as far as breaking through and getting attention, there's a kind of sense, which I think is justified and probably accurate, that nothing in the song really matters other than whatever little snippet of it ends up getting used in TikToks, which is usually, you know, five or 10 seconds. I yeah, and I think that that is something that's interesting with metal. Because you think about it, there's a lot of parallels with this stuff in metal. Like like Lorna Shore to the Hellfire, for example. It's obviously longer than a 15-second clip or whatever. But, like, that is the metal equivalent of what pops off on TikTok. And, like, that's the thing. It's like nobody's like, oh, man, dude, you know, that first verse into the Hellfire. Damn, son, I love that. No one. I mean, people obviously like it, but like no one's like, you know, dying over it like they are the breakdown. You know, it's just it's just the way that it is. And so that I mean, honestly, like when I'm writing music, I definitely think of like what's like I think of it in some way and sometimes in ways of like 
if I was to make this into like a Facebook or an Instagram story ad, what part is going to be that part? Uh, and that's similar to TikTok. Cause like in TikTok, you know, you want to promote the best part of the song. Uh, so that way people will go listen to it. Or in the case of like pop and stuff like that, use it as a sound for something else. Out of a two, three, four minute song. For example, when Bring Me the Horizon went kind of viral last year with Can You Feel My Heart with that weird trend of girls using it to like jump on their bed and stuff. Can you fix a broken? Can you feel my heart? On the one hand, of course, it is cool. Here's the other thing about TikTok, okay? I know I just paused it once already, but a lot of this content on TikTok is fucking stupid. I mean, I'm sorry. Like, it is absolutely, like, you have to have the IQ or the brain of of a fawn to, like, be entertained by this. Like, so obviously, some stuff is, but, like, for example, like, these trends, who's, like, sitting there watching these? Like, that's what I want to know. Who? 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 Cool that they got a bump from the sort of viral trend of that song. That certainly helped them out and helped new people discover their music that otherwise wouldn't have heard it. Yeah. On the other hand, if you're the kind of person who believes in like the value of the song as a whole, of storytelling and giving the song room to breathe and evolve over the course of a few minutes, if you see things that way, which I think is an entirely valid point of view, mm. then it's kind of a bummer to see a song reduced to just these 10 seconds, right? And this is exacerbating a larger trend Trend where before it was about albums, now it's about singles. Now even the song itself doesn't matter. It's really just about these little snippets. Yeah. Another example of that from like the metal and alternative world is Lorna Shore and their song To The Hellfire, which is six minutes long with yeah, a lot see? of kind of intricate arrangement details and all these cool like symphonic elements. But on TikTok, it's just reduced to a few seconds of the song, specifically the yeah. breakdown towards the end, which ended up getting used in like millions and millions of TikToks. And don't get me wrong, that is a sick breakdown. I totally understand why people went crazy for it, but I would argue that's kind of the least interesting part of the song. And so in a sense, it's kind of a bummer to to see that that's what people picked up on. First of all, the, the, the dance is weird, but uh, but yeah. So splash it. Yeah, no, I know that there's some good, there's some cool stuff on there. I just mean like these trends. Like I just don't understand the point of that. Uh, I don't even have TikTok. I always feel out of the loop. My friends, are yeah, like I have TikTok, but I literally just use it to post stuff. Um, but yeah, so that's the thing is that sometimes the best part of the song, it's obviously subjective to everybody, but it's always the part that's like the most attention grabbing. So when you have Will, you know, doing the, the noises, whether you think that's the best part or not, that's the part that's going to make people go like, Oh, what, 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 what was that? You know, that's what's going to happen. So I'm not really willing to say up, that writing good songs no longer matters in the world of TikTok, but I think there is some truth to that because at least when it comes to getting that sort of breakthrough moment that so many small artists are looking for, it's kind of true that all that really matters is that one TikTok worthy snippet of the song. Most people will never even hear the rest of it. And you might say, well, it's not yeah. TikTok's fault. <laughs> yeah, that that's what the audience latches onto. And I think that's true. But at the same time, I think part of it is due to the nature of the TikTok platform itself. Because although the app is huge for music discovery, as I talked about, remember that first and foremost, it is a video sharing app. So yeah. when you look at the songs that end up trending, they do tend to be the ones that lend themselves to some sort of a big visual moment, which oftentimes means lyrics that are kind of dumb and meme -y. For example, We Not Humping by Flo Millie. Oh, and on the one hand, I'm inclined to just sort of shrug and say, well, that's what the people want. You can't argue with that. On the other hand, you do sort of wonder if something has been lost. Like, it's hard to imagine a lot of songs from the past, for example. Like Here's my thing. This is kind of the, the opinion that I'm starting to form a little bit. I, I believe the vast majority of people are not into music for like the storytelling aspect of it, I believe, especially on TikTok, I, I've, this is what I'm talking about, the vast majority of TikTok users. I believe the vast majority are into music that will accentuate their video that they're doing. 
You, you, does that make sense? Like, I feel like they're only into the music that's going to make their video more appealing and look cooler. Like, I don't think they're really concerned about the lyrical content or like the the structure of it. You know, the all that. I don't. I don't. They just don't care about that. Like, they 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 just want a song that's going to accentuate their video. They're not going to go back after and like you know listen to the song and uh, digest it and you know they're not going to. It's very surface level. Like Jeremy by Pearl Jam, which was a massive hit when I was in high school. It's hard to imagine that succeeding in a TikTok world, right? Not because it's a bad song, but just because there's nothing about it that would lend itself to the format of TikTok. It's very dark and brooding. There's really no like yeah. clever meme part that you could dance to or do some sort of a visual pun to. And so you wonder, would a song like that just kind of die on the vine if it came out today? And so the net effect of all of that is that artists understand everything that I just said yeah, exactly. in extreme Splash. detail. And so because of that, they're increasingly <laughs> writing songs. Yeah, Glinty, yeah. What sellouts, man? I can't believe that, uh, I can't believe they are not interested in, uh, you know, I like how, how dare they make like brooding dark music. I mean, come on, man, you got to get the, they should have known in 1980 that there was going to be a TikTok. I mean, come on, they should have known. They should have known. Hold on one second. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Songs specifically with TikTok in mind. In the back of their head, always thinking like, how can I create one of these viral hooks that will go big on TikTok because... Black metal TikTok is like non-existent. It's because none of them have phones. They, they just, they don't. They, they, they don't have phones. They instinctively at this point understand that that's kind of all that matters. But as tempting as it is for me to say that this is a new thing and that that's all TikTok's fault, I'm not really sure that either of those things are true. I think we may be looking at the past with rose-colored glasses and forgetting that pop music has always been like this. As a couple random examples yeah. of songs from 10 or 20 years ago, think of like Britney Spears' Hit Me Baby One More Time or I Kissed a Girl by Katy Perry or any of the rap songs about a dance yeah, butcher, like yep. Lean With It, Rock With It or Teach Me How to Dougie. If TikTok existed when those songs came out, those all would have been TikTok songs, right? Right? Oh, for like, sure. As I'm saying, oh, that, you can probably picture those TikToks in your head, right? And as far as these like kind of empty songs that are all built around some dumb viral hook, we'll just think of any of the 9 million flash in the pan songs where everybody knows the hook and the chorus, but probably nothing else in the song. For example, like who let the dogs out? This has always been a driving factor in terms of like pop. And it's actually kind of even true in metal too. For example, Suicidal Tendencies song Institutionalized, which is a very early example of what I guess you could call like a meme metal song, which as far as I'm aware is to this day the most played hardcore song of all time. Now, I do think that social media in general and TikTok in particular has probably exaggerated this trend and made our attention spans even worse than they already were. But True. I don't think it's fair or accurate to say that TikTok created this by any means. No. But again, we can't ignore the sort of unique it aspects didn't of the help. platform in particular. And one of those is that it has made looks more important than ever. Now, of course, being yep. attractive has always been an asset in the entertainment industry, certainly since the advent of TV. I mean, look at the Beatles and Elvis as obvious examples of that. But with TikTok, again, it's on another level. If yeah. you've used the app at all, it is obvious that the platform clearly favors good looking people. As True. far as I'm aware, it hasn't been confirmed. That that's, why, that's why none of my videos get shown, man. Damn, I figured it out. Damn. This is like happening on purpose, but there are a lot of people that believe that's true, that this is like an official TikTok policy with their moderators. And knowing how China operates, and remember it is a Chinese app, as many people forget, I'm kind of inclined to think that it probably is true. But either way, whether this is like a deliberate thing that mm. the platform is doing or not, okay. the fact of the matter is that pretty people do have an advantage on TikTok. Everybody knows this. For example, let's take the pop punk artist Jaden, who first blew up as a TikToker. <laughs> and by the way, I actually think does make good music. So But it definitely doesn't hurt that he is also just absolutely disgustingly good looking. And you have to wonder, would he have had this much success as an artist if he was ugly? 
And if the answer to that question is no, does that mean that the people who didn't win the genetic lottery, who weren't born good looking, can't be artists? That the only role that they could have in the music industry is being relegated to some sort of behind the scenes kind of role? If so, that really doesn't feel good, does it? Like we shouldn't want a world in which the only people who can be musicians are also freakishly good looking. At least I don't think so. There's also the increasing trend of these like fake engineered viral moments with one of the more interesting examples mm. of that being the Gale song ABCDEFU, which blew up on TikTok and then went on to go to number one in over 13 countries. And let's look at exactly what happened with that. The story is that Gail posted a TikTok asking for songwriting challenges. Then she got a reply from okay. somebody named Nancy Berman, challenging her to make a breakup song based on the alphabet. And then she yeah. posted this. Yeah, exactly what Splash said. Yeah. The good looks have always mattered. It's just that TikTok is such a massive platform that there's much more of an emphasis on it. I mean, listen, man, like, I mean, it's just the way that it is. Like, they, I, like I, I, I mean, listen, I, obviously you don't want to deter anybody from pursuing their dreams or anything like that. I mean, maybe, you know, it, 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 in metal, I think that it helps, obviously, but... Uh, you know, I think a lot of a lot. I think a, I think a lot of metal fans are more so interested in the uh, like in general the proficiency of their instrument, whether it's like vocals or just you know a standard instrument. I think that that is a thing in metal. But I do think I do think that uh, you know looks certainly don't not help in metal, but I, in general they just do. That goes for all social media. Yeah, I mean, people are just more drawn to to like the good looking people. Like that, I feel like that is just like the first line of defense to like watch something you're scrolling. You're like, damn, who's that? And then you watch and then you're like, Oh, this sucks. Or, Oh, this is cool. Uh, but it's the, it's, it's, that's the first thing. Like, I mean, it's just, it just is in response to the challenge. A, B, C, D, E, F, U, and your mom, and your sister, and your child, baby. That TikTok yeah, song quickly took horrible, off. Then the she way. released the full song, which got used in millions of TikToks. And yeah. that was the start of her amazing rise to fame. And there's a couple yeah, things that I want to point lyrics. out here. Like notice that the original reply is just her with an acoustic guitar singing into her phone, which kind of implies that this is just like a loose off the cuff response <laughs> to the original comment, That's fine, which would be an amazing display of her songwriting talent if it was actually real. But if we look at the comment, we'll see this account name and if we go to this account name we'll see it's private but if we look her up on google we see her on linkedin in fact we see her as a digital marketing manager at atlantic records and if we look up gail we'll see that oh she's actually my on my god atlantic. yep apparently it was wait a minute you mean to tell me that somebody in pop planted this no dude no like everything's organic man like that she obviously came up with that song on the fly. No way, dude. No. Nope. Nope. It's all just a marketing campaign from her label. And that no is just way. one example that happened to get pointed out and called attention to, but I'm sure that there are tons and tons more that we don't even know about. Now, of course, publicity stunts in the world of music are nothing new. For example, we just celebrated the 40th anniversary of Ozzy biting the head off a Hell bat on yeah. stage, which was obviously a calculated move on their part to drive media coverage of him as this awful satanic menace that bites the head off of bats, which freaked out parents and would make kids love him. And so in that sense, this stuff is nothing new. Seated by his infamy. I looked evidently through an unconscious bat on the stage and he thought it was a rubber bat, whatever, and he picked it up and bit the head off. And Sean's going, Dummy, it's real. I'm going, what? But I do think that it's fair to say <laughs> that, again, the specific nature of TikTok as a platform is creating even more pressure to come up with these viral moments because with so many people creating so much content all the time, it kind of feels like the only way to cut through the noise of the platform and get noticed is to do one of these big viral stunts. A lot of artists are starting to talk about this. One of the big examples most recently was from Halsey, who ironically talked about it on TikTok. And she basically claimed that her label was holding her new song hostage and wouldn't release it until they could come up with some sort of viral moment around it to promote it.
I don't know what the conversation was between her and her label. That could totally be the case. But at the same time, you also have to wonder how many of these moments where the artist claims that their label is holding them hostage are themselves contrived marketing plans where the artist and the label have agreed to create this like fake beef with oh. each other, knowing that fans. So the so the fake viral moment is the fake situation that they're saying is the reason why the song isn't coming out. Damn. Okay. I'm gonna let me write that down real quick. I need to remember that. Fans will always take the artist's side and hopefully blow the song up on TikTok to supposedly spite the label. Welcome to do like, that's the point where we're at. Like, nobody has any idea what is even real and what is some sort of phony marketing campaign. Everything just... I'm kind of under the assumption that whenever there's, like, other than, like, videos of animals, I am almost, like, almost pretty sure that most things that I watch like that are fake. Like, that's just kind of, like, my thought process. Like if it's unless it's like a dog laying with like a a a goose, like if it's not that, it's like, like, I just think it's fake. Uh, Rich and Burb need to get the fake. Yeah, we need we need a fake beef trend. Yeah, we we need something. Imagine better better bliss writes a a breakdown. Uh, this crazy bulls that went TikTok. I mean, I would love it. I mean, straight up, I would love it feels fake, right? But still, regardless, even if some of this stuff is contrived, I think the larger point does stand. Clearly, artists are being pressured to become content creators as much as they are musicians. Yeah. Mike Shinoda of Linkin Park had a tweet about this, which I think describes the way a lot of artists feel. I'm tired of hearing musicians be told that they're not investing enough energy in social media content. Every artist I talk to right now has this feeling. They say they're spending way too much time making little videos to support their careers, but wish they could spend more time making and playing music. How is a young artist expected to put in enough time to get great at their craft when they need to feed all these content channels? The time they spend generating mind-numbing quote-unquote content might have been at the expense of the best song they never wrote. And and that's true. I mean, I definitely see Mike's point of view. I, I do agree that a lot of the content is is stupid. Like, a lot of content is just dumb. Like, especially, like, around music. Like, let's be honest, guys. Like, putting a guitar playthrough or a dr drum playthrough, like, it's cool. Like, it's, 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 it's just, it's filler content. You may get another couple of hits out of the song on it. But, like, at the end of the day, who really cares? Right? I mean, really, like, who cares? Like, if I did a Bitter Bliss vocal playthrough, it's cool for a day or, like, three hours, and then no one cares, right? It's just, like, the way that it is. Um, so to that, I, I agree. But I think it all really depends on what your sensibilities are and what you prioritize with music. Like, if you're doing it for the love of the music, then don't even worry about it. But if you're doing it as a business person... Like, I don't know, man. Like, I feel like it, it's one of those things where it's like it's a it's a marketing channel. It's a free marketing channel that can be propped up if you successfully hit an algorithm like lottery ticket in a way. Right. So that's the way that I look at it is like it, it is a business. Like, I don't know, man. Like, it's just like the, the, the like scout. There's no there's no scouts going around to like the local Dave's Bar and Grill anymore. Like, there's no, like, Atlantic Records scouts doing that. Like, at least as far as I'm aware. I mean, they could be, but I highly doubt it. Like, like if you go to your local venue, there's nobody from Sharp Tone Records sitting there going like, damn, disfigured embodiment, man. They can make a real impact on our label. It's just, so, I don't know. I feel like it's just the way that it goes. Um, it, the, uh, when Pink Floyd went to Spotify, they released Wish You Were Here, uh, it went out with when you have a million to listen to it, we release the rest. Of it. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, people are always using different ways to promote their stuff. I, I, I think that that's, I think that makes sense. On the one hand, I get it. He is right that there's a ton of pressure for artists to be content creators as much as they are musicians. And it is tough to be good at both of those things. And of course, yeah. a lot of those musicians probably would rather just focus all their energy on their music. I mean, after yeah. all, that is why they are musicians, right? But this balancing act of balancing creating your art versus promoting that art, this has always been a struggle for artists, especially in the social media era since MySpace. But I do think 
think it's fair to say that TikTok has tipped that balance even further in favor of the promotion side to the point where now it feels like the music sometimes hardly even matters. Like successful artists now are influencers first and musicians second. And a lot of labels. Exactly. I think that that is the thing. Like, for example, if, if Anthony Fantano was to be, like, say, uh, he may be a musician. I honestly don't know. But, like, say he started releasing solo music or, uh, you know, even Finn to a degree. I know that he does, like, some grindcore stuff. But, like, his music is going to have an element of success because of his influence and his status that already exists on social media. Uh, so I feel like that's kind of a lot of the ways to do it now is to be like an awesome TikToker or like, you know, I know, I know like some people, like a friend of mine has a friend who has like 2 million followers on TikTok. If that person all of a sudden did like a song that would have a, a higher chance of success than, you know, whatever local band or whatever. I mean, that, 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 that that's just, that's just the way that it is. Uh, it's a wider net. It's a wider audience to reach. Uh, for better or for worse. Um, yeah. Labels are seeing things the same way. They're looking for people who first and foremost have a good social media following and not so much focusing on whether their music is good or not, which of course is super frustrating to all the people out there who are great musicians, but maybe aren't great at social media. And they're like, what happened? I thought this was the music industry. So I do understand that, but at the same time, I'm also not that sympathetic because a lot of musicians forget that this has never been the music business. It has always been the entertainment business. True. It's not just about the music and it never has been. Going back to like at least the 50s, which is when like... T so exactly, see, I, I think I know where he's going to go with this, you know, because back then Elvis didn't just sit in a cube and write songs. You know, he went on... Uh, he went on like talk shows. He went on, uh, I don't know if he was in any TV shows or movies at the time, but like, obviously these are like different than like TikTok, but there were other mediums that weren't necessarily equivalent, but that were like the TikTok of then, if that makes sense. Uh, and then Splash here says, I mean, the world is changing, but I think artists and influence shouldn't be forced together. It's okay for an artist to use their platform for influence, but I think there's a limit needs to be in place. There needs to be a boundary. I mean, I, I, I don't necessarily disagree, but I just don't know how you enforce that boundary. I feel like it's just, I, I just don't feel like there is a way to enforce it. You know what I mean? TV started to become what it is today. Artists have always had to do the press circuit of yeah. all the TV shows, the radio stations, yep. the magazine interviews, photo shoots and videos and all that kind of stuff. And I know that that's exhausting because I've done plenty of press myself, but that is the job. Unless you want to be one of those faceless hired guns who shows up to play bass and Kelly Clarkson's backing band or whatever, and no shade to those people. I've always said, if you're a drummer, if you're a drummer, become a country drummer because the, it's easy to play, no one cares who you are, and you make a good living. Easy. Simple. Well, I just know that that's not necessarily what most musicians Personal, are looking for. Oh, I got Unless you. Yeah, you no, they shouldn't feel people, pressure. Well, you need yeah, to you're put right. yourself out there and build a following. Like it or not, that is the job. It's to be an entertainer, not just a guitar operator. And so to True. me, TikTok really is an amazing opportunity because anyone, anywhere can get millions and millions of eyeballs and ears on their music just by making videos on the phone that they already own in their bedroom. A good example of this in the rock side of things is Jarris Johnson. Yeah. He got big on TikTok back in 2020 with his song, Damn, and doing covers of rock artists like Papa Roach and Trapped. Now he's signed to 300, the same label as Gunna and Megan Thee Stallion. He he went on tour with Falling in Reverse. He's playing all the big summer festivals. And all of that started with TikTok. So knowing all of that, if you don't want to make TikToks, that is totally fine. I get it. It's not for everyone. But if you're not going to make TikToks, then you can't really complain that your music isn't getting attention. If you are choosing not to participate in the platform where you know that 750 million people are out there using it to discover new music, especially knowing that there are other artists who are doing that. And it's especially hard for me to feel sorry for artists who complain about making TikToks. When you think about all the shit that people who have real jobs have to deal with, like working on an oil rig or food service, you know, my dad was a correction. 
I guess, I mean, to be fair, in metal, a lot of those people are not only musicians or content creators, but they also, also, also work on those oil rigs, to be fair. But, yeah, I think the thing is, like, I see it all the time, man. I see it on Facebook all the time. Oh, my God, man. Fucking, we're getting zucked. We're get, I see that all the time on Facebook. It's like you just got to be consistent about it over time. You got you, you can't really focus on it. Like, you have to just put your head down. It's a pain in the ass. Like, it is. Like, obviously, what Finn is saying is true. Like, there's obviously, you know, way more. But it is a pain in the ass. Like, I, even just before I go on Twitch... I got to post the thing on Twitter. I got to post it on Facebook. I got to make an Instagram story. I got to post it on the YouTube. I got to post it in the Discord. All these things don't take long, but there is just a lot of avenues that you need to be associated with to make sure you're maximizing your potential reach on these like free platforms. Um, I, I, it's 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 true. I agree with that 100%. Don't complain about people blowing up on TikTok if you're not choosing to do it. Yeah, exactly. It, it, yes, 100%. I agree with Finn on that, dude. But honestly, it's about finding an audience, whether it's 10 or 100 people. It's about me. Exactly. And that's why I think, I I mean, listen, obviously, like, I would love for Bitter Bliss to be huge, like, massive. I would love for that to be the case. But if I can have that 1,000 true fans model, I, I'm cool with that, too. I'm just cool with, here's here's the way that I approach it. And I feel like if more musicians did this, they would be a lot happier with themselves just go into it with make the best songs you possibly can release them. Do not hold like an attachment. You can obviously be attached to them because you know, you made it or whatever, but just get to the next one. Use the social media platforms, do as much as you can and just keep it rolling. Like if you don't want to do certain things, then don't. But I mean, but you know, like, but then you again, like what we're saying here in the chat, and what Finn's saying, don't complain if this Avenue is working for others. If you're not even trying that, that's, that's the best thing that I can do is just sit there and, and make a plan with yourself. Here's what I want to do and just keep doing it consistently and it'll either work out or it won't. That's it. Parents officer or teachers dealing with these crazy parents. So when I think True. about it that way, it's just like, sorry if I don't feel sorry for a musician who doesn't want to make a few TikToks to promote their music. When there's someone out there right now doing roofing in the hot summer heat without thousands of people cheering them on. Now, with all of that being said, I do think there TikToks are some about that, legitimate though. complaints. For example, there is the matter of royalties on TikTok, which to be blunt, are not great. Roughly speaking, <laughs> sure if 10,000 people use your song in a video, you're, you're going to make Hell around yeah, man. I appreciate $300, it. which kind of sucks. Yes, you get some yeah, exposure is, and there's definitely corny, value Connor. in exposure, but that only takes you so far. Like exposure has to turn into money at some point, right? You can't pay rent with exposure. And so far... It, it, and that that is something that I totally agree with. I think at, to a certain extent, I think people who are like, you know, artists should be paid more on Spotify. It's like... Yeah, like, obviously, like, I'm never going to be like, nope, as an artist, I'm good. Obviously, I'd want to pay, be paid more. But there are things in place that can propel your songs on Spotify, which then turns around to also be royalties that you would have never had otherwise. Which, which then again, you could just be like, well, that's just all a construct of Spotify anyway. True. But the exposure thing eventually needs to equate into something. And that's, you know, as somebody who, uh, like my day job is a freelance writer. I wrote for free for like 10 years. So I hate, I, I don't, I don't buy the being paid an exposure or in writing in the writing world, it's being paid a dollar for every thousand views. That stuff is horse shit. But I think that if you are a smaller artist, use these platforms and streaming services as marketing tools to, you know, to then lead people to your merch and stuff like that. I, you know, things that you can capitalize on financially until you have enough of a catalog. And that's the cool thing with streaming too, is that you'll eventually have a catalog big enough that as you continue to get bigger, people will go and it's like a waterfall effect. People will go back and listen and it's just recurring income eventually. Um, yeah. Far at least, that is not really happening on TikTok, although hopefully that will change. And so to sum it all go. up, yeah, exactly I don't think that TikTok created any of these trends because almost all of them have been around since the advent of TV, yeah, well, or Nick's, at the very least since MySpace. Yeah, it what Splash is saying here about Nick. Yeah, I mean, Nick's a buddy of mine. I mean, I, I myself have told him to, to take a break. I mean, that dude has been going for literally years. Like, and just hasn't stopped. He's a busy guy. I mean, shoot, I... 
I was on Discord with him, and I fell asleep in my chair talking to him while he was editing, just because I wanted to keep him company, you know, just to, I wanted to make, like, his editing process, you know, uh, you know, just a little bit more lively rather than, like, being up at 2 a.m. and just listening to the crickets chirp. But, goddamn, I fell asleep, you know. But, yeah, he, he's, he's a grinder. And it's easy to think that there was some like mythical past where only great artists got popular with brilliant music that really meant something and was this grand artistic statement and audiences didn't reward these gimmicky shallow yeah, songs my by friend. pretty faces. But honestly, that is just not true. That past never existed. Like even in 1992, the year that grunge exploded when I was in ninth grade, remember this, you know who charted higher than Nirvana? The band that we all sort of remember as symbolizing the early nineties, Chris uh -oh. Cross, Right Said Fred and Billy Ray Cyrus. Those are the artists that really oh, topped the charts in 1992. But I do hot. think it's fair to say that TikTok exaggerated or accelerated a lot of these arguably negative trends because the platform really kind of does encourage us to be the worst versions yeah, of ourselves. Yeah, that's true, Torn. Shallow yep. people with short attention spans who just want to look at pretty faces and gorge ourselves on the musical equivalent of fast food. But to answer the question in the hey, title of this video, did TikTok good. really truly ruin music? I would say no, because for everything wrong with the platform, at the end of the day, I think the good really does outweigh the bad. Because the hardest thing for creators of any kind is being discovered, right? And I would say that TikTok has done more for music discovery than anything else in the past 10 years, maybe since yeah. MySpace. So for me personally, my advice is that I would encourage artists to look at TikTok as an opportunity rather than focusing on the negatives. All right, my friends, that does it for this video. As always, let me know what you think in the comments. Yeah. And I would like to thank everyone who supports me on Patreon, especially those of you who support at the true cult level or above. Patrons yes. get all my podcasts a week early. I do giveaways. I do some other stuff. And I also review your music. If you want me to review something live on Twitch every month, I do a call for submissions. Just drop your music in the comments of that post, then I will review it live on Twitch and post it on Patreon for everyone else to see. So if that sounds cool, check it out at the link in the description of this video. And with that, I will sign off for now, but I will see you next time. Yeah, guys, so there's the first video from Finn we're going to check out. Oh my God, yeah, I'm going to be checking. I, that's that's not a video to watch on tw uh, on here on Twitch. That's a video for myself, Blair Witch Mythology. I, mean, I don't know why, but I'm interested. But uh, yeah, here, here you guys go. Um, where's the... How would I get to the video? Because it's on my uh, watch later. I guess it would just be, would it be this part here? Curious. Want to make sure we get the right video link. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, so here's the link. Uh, can you check your Insta DMs? Yeah, I, I, I will. Uh, one second. Uh, yeah, so there's the um, there's the video there. If you guys want to give it a like or whatever. Finn, Finn's a good guy. Uh, Finn's a good guy. I think, I think in general, man, it's like, with TikTok, it's, um, you know, I, I, I just think that we have to accept that. I think, like, the vast majority of people aren't as invested in music as, like, we are or, like, metal people are because I feel like a lot of people just want to have a song to put on in the car while they go to drop their kids off at school or a song to listen to on the highway or on their way to work. Like, nobody's sitting here, like, I mean, I'm sure there obviously are, like, people that are like this, right? But, like, the vast majority of people aren't, you know, watching somebody like me on Twitch or watching somebody like Finn or Nick or something like that. You know, they're just kind of like, yeah, what's something I can put on like while I wait in the Dunkin' Donuts drive through. I, that's just the way that it goes. I agree with Finn on that vid. Yeah. I, yeah. Finn has a lot of good insights, man. He really does.